of our institute. I welcome all the staff members of this institute and also the staff members of other institutions and the students who are attending this webinar. A very happy Science Day to all of you. We at the Institute of Science Aurangabad have organized this special lecture on the occasion of National Science Day, the theme Health for All. Incidentally, we are also celebrating 75 years of India's independence. And it is also the birthday of my own research guide, Dr. Paknikar, who is a well-known scientist in the field of bio-nanotechnology and medical nanotechnology. So at the outset, I would like to introduce our institute to you before we begin with this uh, special lecture. The Government Institute of Science is a postgraduate and research institute established in the year 1974 at Aurangabad to provide higher education to the underprivileged students of Marathwada region. Affiliated to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University, Aurangabad, this postgraduate teaching and research institute is funded and administered by the government of Maharashtra. The well-qualified and experienced faculty members are selected through MPSC, and most of them have a good research credentials. Due to the dedication and students' <laughs> approach of the teacher, our students are well-placed across the globe, and the institute has become one of the leading institutions of Maharashtra. The institute has received funds from uh, for infrastructure development from various agencies like DST, UGC, RUSA, and other funding agencies. The institute is running MSc and doctoral studies leading to PhD in five subjects, namely biophysics, biotechnology, botany, microbiology, and geology. I'm glad that today we have with us a very eminent person working in the field of pharmacology and drug development, Dr. Urmila Aswar, madam, who has over 18 years of academic and research experience. Dr. Urma, Urmila Aswar is an associate professor working at Pune College of Pharmacy uh, under Bharti Vidyapit deemed to be University Pune. She has completed her M farm from, from the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Nagpur, uh, and uh, PhD in Pharmaceutical Sciences with uh, specialization in pharmacology from Pune College of Pharmacy. Before that, uh, before working here in Pune College, she has uh, worked with the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, which is popularly known as NIPER, Guwahati. Then she has also worked with the Sihagar Institute of Pharmacy. And uh, uh, interestingly, she has also worked in the biotechnology industry, uh, namely Indus Biotech Pune. She has guided about 25 MPharm students, and uh, she is already guiding uh, three PhD students for their uh, research degree. She has published about 35 research publications in various peer-reviewed international journals. She has presented her research work in more than 60 national and international conferences. One of the notab uh, notable achievement is that she has completed 40 preclinical industrial projects. So that is a very remarkable achievement, I would say. She has received uh, various awards, just to name a few. Uh, the PC Dandia Award, two times she has got that. Then the Gulati Award, Uvnas Award, and Achari Award from the Indian Pharmaceutical Society. And recently, her student, her PhD student, got uh, the Best Oral Presentation Award in uh, Nipicon 2022. Uh, these are uh, the name awards which are given annually at the Indian Pharmaceutical Society. She has also received the Best Research Project Award for the year 2010-11 by the 54th IPC Trust, uh, Indian Pharma, uh, Pharmacological Association, Pune. She is also the recipient of the Best Teacher Award two times, that is in 2011 and 2015, from the Sihagad Institute of Pharmacy. As far as her professional experience is concerned and professional expertise is concerned, she is a trained nominee of the CPC SEA, that is uh, the Committee for the Purpose of Control and Supervision of Experiments on Animals. Now, this is a very important committee uh, which actually approves the research projects which are concerned with uh, the use of animal models for in vivo studies. So, uh, the, she is uh, a trained nominee for that. 
then she has also trained for the institutional animal and care program which is an international accreditation board she was nominated as the executive committee member of the indian pharmacological society west zone then she is a reviewer of various national and international peer reviewed journals and she also works as the associate editor for a number of international journals she is involved in creating cognizance about various preclinical techniques by arranging hands on training uh, for the pharmacology students she is also associated with the lila punawala foundation pune for promoting girls for higher education okay so he, she has a very rich uh, bio data i would say uh with this very brief introduction uh, may i now request our esteemed resource person dr urmila aswar to present her talk on from the bench to the bedside new drug development process uh, dr Aus aswar madam please uh thank you sir uh, for uh, such a good introduction which you have given and thanks a lot i am first of all at this outset i would uh, um first thank uh, satputa sir uh, who is the director of isc uh, isc and then uh, ullas patil sir and petka sir for inviting me for this lecture uh, at uh, on the uh, precious day uh, that is national science day uh, so my topic is uh, from bench to bedside and uh, new drug uh, development uh, so should i start with the lecture sir should yes I madam yes madam share my screen and then yeah you can share your screen let let us see whether it is uh, visible yeah. yes can we see yeah. this yeah screen? yes yes it is visible okay yeah. i i'm just making full screen so is it okay full yeah screen? you can yeah uh, the moment sir also there no yes okay uh, so yeah so i am dr vilaswar as sir has uh, already introduced me and i work as associate professor pune college of pharmacy uh, this is the picture like you know this is the research wing which we have at our place and completely dedicated to research uh, in pharmaceutical sciences then simultaneously we uh, have also a very good academic uh, um, going on uh, with the research so uh, uh, we are accredited with nda nrf iso and so many other bodies so thanks a lot sir and uh, let us go with the uh, with my topic and that is from bench to bedside new drug development process uh, so this is uh, because you know lot of molecules are uh, completely we are undergoing doing the research and then you know we are finding out the molecules and some of them so so many are there on the bench but some of them they go to the bedside bedside means they are actually used by the patient so this is a big process and you know the lot of time as well as energy money and uh, it, it is required uh, we have recently seen the drug development which has happened in front of us and that is vaccine development for covid so we have seen that you know the process is a uh, it, it is time consuming almost takes 10 years but then covid vaccine we were able to get within one and half to two years so accelerated process we can say you know so that we have seen every one of us we have observed so when we are talking about you know the uh, drug development so it is basically you know whenever we are starting with a drug development it is always with a uh, with a chemical name for example if it, if the molecule is coming from the lab chemistry lab so it is always with a chemical name and which undergo the rigorous process of drug development and that is what we see as a tablet and then different doses forms you know so for example aspirin was uh, which is almost in 1900 it was um, uh, at uh, uh, we can say discovered and we are still using it you know so we have different forms of uh, tablets you know in the form of tablets capsules so other formulations we can see so going uh, you know uh, starting with my introduction about uh, the drugs so we have dnc act 1940 if you want to you know understand how the drug development take place so definitely it is under the whole drug which we are using at india is under the control of uh, uh, under the legal control and uh, drug and cosmetic act 1940 uh, it talks about the medicines which are used for internal external use uh, for human being or animal or substances which are intended to be used in diagnosis treatment mitigation or prevention of any disease or disorder in human beings or an animal including preparations which are applied uh, for the purpose of repelling the mosquitoes you know insectic mosquito can be considered as a drug so drug is a substance which can be a chemical which can be a biological it can be synthetic non synthetic herbal you know so and now we are trying to get the drugs out of our our, our own ayurvedic medicines 
So uh, this now the process has accelerated. I told you that you know within two years we were able to see the vaccine development, COVID vaccine development. But initially, if we see that you know that the drug was read or the drugs were uh, developed early in the early 19th century, and then you know the drug was used for almost 30 to 50 years, and then later on we can see in 20th century the the drug so many drugs started getting developed, and 10 to 20 years the drugs were used. There are few drugs which are still used. You know, aspirin is one of them. That which was developed very early and still we are using it. So yes, we have strict regulations by government, various government where the drug is been discovered or it is been developed. So if it is from India, then we are, you know, we have to follow the guidelines which are given by CDSCO and ICMR. And similarly, you know, if you are developing that drug in US, then you have to follow the US FDA. So uh, Drug and Cosmetic Acts, uh, you know, then Schedule Y is there where we have to, you know, uh, which is involved, uh, which involves the uh, uh, discovery of drug or applying for, uh, you know, clinical trials. So, so first question arises, why are new drugs needed? You know, why we require new drugs? So right now we have understood that, you know, if I say why new drugs are required. So right now I think every one of us, we know that, um, yes, drugs are required because, you know, the new uh, diseases keeps on coming. So uh, this is what we are right now seeing also. So the few examples which I have given is it is because of the unmet medical needs. You know, the new diseases which are coming up, there are certain, like, you know, the diseases which were not very prominent in earlier generation, but now it is becoming more, uh, you know, for example, COVID, then AIDS, Alzheimer's, obesity, you know, so all these. And uh, uh, also there are certain drugs which are already available in the market, but they are not very effective. Same, similarly, in case of Alzheimer's and cancer, you know. So that's why we require good drugs. There are certain side effects associated with, uh, with the present drug, for example, antipsychotics, and that's why we require good drugs. Then the downstream health cost, you know, for example, spinal cord injury. So still we don't have the drug which can cure the disease and we require new drug. Cost of therapy, sometimes, you know, the interleukins, the biologicals are coming in, uh, uh, capturing the market as huge, and, uh, but the cost is very high. So we require something which is synthetic and which can, you know, replace uh, this type of drug, uh, biologicals. You know, then cost to individual country, you know, cost to individual country. And uh, for example, the countries, they themselves, they suffer from a particular disease. So one of the example I will give you, you know, right now, the depression. So depression is quite common in country like now, if we see the recent data, recent most data. So the country like Ukraine is suffering from depression. The patients are highest suffering from depression in Ukraine, in US also. Then, you know, so these countries, they uh, show more number of depre uh, depre uh, depression in the patient as well as China and, US, uh, and India. You know, India is also in the line. So, uh, so it, uh, you know, so it leads to uh, cost to the country. So, you know, because if the if the people are suffering from diseases, so definitely uh, it affects the family and it affects the society and finally the country. Then, uh, uh, so other than that, there is uh, the business which is involved, uh, pharmaceutical industry. And we know that, you know, the huge number of people are working in pharmaceutical industry and the industry also want to make money. So, yes, so it, it's a sustained industrial activity, which is for which uh, we require uh, new drug development. And then uh, the one more thing is patent expiry. So the product which is which comes into the market, it comes with a patent and where the exclusive marketing can be done by the industry, but then it expires, you know, so after 20 years it expires. So in that case, the newer drug, you know, so we require newer drugs so that we will have the hold on the market or, you know, after off patent also uh, will lead to uh, the same molecule can be converted into little bit changes can be made and a new, newer drug can be made. So this is the requirement why we want, uh, you know, the drug into the market. Then other than that, you know, if we talk about uh, drug discovery, so how we can, you know, how, how we can think of drug discovery. So either you can, uh, so these are some points which I have mentioned here, choosing the disease, choosing the drug, drug target, identifying uh, bias which is available, finding a lead compound, isolation, purification, structure determination, her herbal medicine also becoming as a source. So most of the time the sources are the organic synthesis, which is, you know, the quite common where the, uh, the molecule is coming from the lab. Other than that, you know, modification in the molecules, that is derivatization, even it can be done in the molecules which are coming up uh, from the natural origin and then we are making the derivatize. And or otherwise, you know, we are directly isolating it from the plant or now what is 
right now as, as i told you that monoclonal antibodies or biologicals so genetic engineering is uh, playing a huge role as a source for drug discovery now choosing the disease so first point which i mentioned that you know choosing a disease so to uh, yeah, so it depends like you know how uh, there are many factors which affect uh, in this case right now covid 19 because every one of us are suffering every country is suffering from covid 19 so yes it is on the high priority area and uh, every one of us every every country is developing the drug for covid 19 but other than that there are certain other factors for example uh, some diseases are very common in india so uh, we have to develop the drug for them and some some diseases which are you know have, which are very prevalent in developed countries so they keep on developing the drug for those diseases so for example alzheimers obesity uh, these are quite common in uh, western country and then they have huge research going on in this area uh, along with cancer so second is economic factor we have to consider huge investment has to be made uh, towards the research r&d in the new drug because you know it's a big process we will see in uh, future slides that it takes a lot of time to develop a new drug so uh, so already i told you that you know there are different ailments uh, migraine ulcer obesity cancer diabetes cardiovascular disease so these are the one most commonly seen in right now in the population and we are seeing that you know drugs are being developed for them so madam, madam can i just interrupt you for a while uh, yes yes sir uh, your slides are not advancing oh they're not advancing the slides no. sir just a minute hold on yeah, yeah. Just let me know if it is okay. Yeah. Uh, not yet. Yeah, yeah. Now, why are new drugs so, needed? Is that the slide you yeah. wanted to show? Yeah. Okay. So this is what you know. I just spoke about uh, why are new drugs needed, and uh, so these are the points which I mentioned, and uh, drug discovery, the sources which we have, and uh, so we are talking about right now uh, the uh, you know that. Uh, what are the factor which decides the drug discovery so as i told you that it depends upon uh, the disease which is very prevalent in the country and uh, covid 19 is very much everywhere so everyone every industry is working after covid 19 most of them so choosing the drug target so suitable drug target for example if you know the target understanding uh, the um, uh, uh, macromolecules or understanding at the molecular level uh, about the disease and then finding out the agonist or antagonist which can be designed for that particular receptor uh, whether it, so this can be inhibited or a, uh, it, it can be stimulated also so depending upon the type of disease finding out the molecular targets and then developing the drug which is right now happening in a, to a great extent in the form of molecular docking so because of the advancements in drug discovery we are able to identify it and we are able to develop new drugs using these type of techniques for example you know i'll just give here example is uh, that you know initially uh, initial period uh, so uh, depression was considered as it is happening because of the decline in the level of monoamines in the brain so monoamines like noradrenaline dopamine and serotonin so desipramine was the uh, a tricyclic antidepressant which was developed during that time but later we uh, the understanding happened that you know it is the serotonin which is mainly affected and it is mainly responsible for depression and that is why we can see that <clears throat> fluoxetine uh, has come as a drug which is ssrs selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor so it increases the le level of serotonin at the synapse and it is a best selling it is one of the best selling antidepressant with different you know uh, brand uh, to Uh, so uh, that means understanding also improves the our drug discovery with the time then discovering the newer targets so right now the newer targets which are very much new and we are still working on them for example there are certain you know ppr gamma receptor fxr lxr so these type of newer targets are also we are understanding we are able to identify the novel receptors and uh, that's why um, finding out the target finding the role in the disease and then uh, do, uh, finding the molecule which can interact uh, will help us in uh, drug discovery 
then other than that you know target specificity and selectivity between the species so this is one important thing where uh, i can give the example of penicillin uh, penicillin inhibits the cell wall or uh, bacterial cell wall biosynthesis so this is the mechanism but one more thing we know that it inhibits only bacterial cell wall and it does not affect the human cell wall the mammalian cell wall so that's why you know uh, penicillin will affect the growth uh of microorganism in the human and uh, uh and it will not affect the other cell in the human so that means our drug should be very selective for its target and it should not affect the normal cells you know so this is one very important thing so considering this uh, so a drug should be with very less undesirable side effect so there should be very less side effect associated with the drug that is very very important and then secondly target specificity and selectivity within the body uh so it should bind to like you know in our body there are different types of receptor present uh, for example if we talk about adrenergic receptor which is involved in blood pressure regulation and heart uh, cardiovascular uh, heart contraction contractility of the heart so then there are and also on the smooth muscles so we can see that beta receptor are the one which are present uh, on these areas and beta 1 beta 2 so we want the drug which will act on beta 1 but it should not act on beta 2 you know so this type of selectivity specificity we should understand about our drug molecule towards the receptor you know then targeting drug to specific organs and tissue so this will in this case for example as previously as i told you that you know so we have to target only if we want that the drug should act on beta 1 receptor that is there on the heart so uh, so that uh, the drug should go into uh, should go into heart and if we don't want its effect to be uh, in the brain so it should not cross the blood brain barrier so this type of you know all these points we have to be considered when we are doing uh, drug discovery you know, so it should be uh, there so uh, so uh, uh, pitfalls are also there uh, because you know sometimes hypertension for example uh, as i'm telling you that the drug should be target specific it should be selective it should not have any side effect but then there are certain disease which are multifactorial type of diseases for example hypertension or high bp so high bp does not happen because of one reason but there are many reason why there is high bp and there are, uh, so there are different reasons such as uh, it is activation of beta 1 receptor calcium ion channels you know so as the angiotensin converting enzyme so we will see that you know to the patient also a single therapy is not given and the combination therapy is given because we do not know why the blood pressure is rising so that is the pitfalls for targeted uh, type of drug discovery so some sometime we require that you know no the drug should act on many target and uh, it should work you know so that type of also we have to consider these points also so hopefully students are understanding this the next challenge is you know identifying a bioassay for drug discovery so if we want to develop a drug then it should be reliable a uh, method by which we are going to study them you know so the test should be very simple quick relevant and because there are huge number of compound which we have to analyze you know so the bioassay or the test system whatever we are using should be very much convenient and should be reliable and uh, we should trust the results whichever is coming uh, so um, so because you know human testing is not possible at an early stage of the drug discovery it is not possible it, the drug cannot be tested directly into the human so most of the time it is in the in vitro first that means uh, on the cell lines you know on on the ex vivo systems followed by you know they will be studied in the animals and followed by then they will be done into the human so first is in vitro testing followed by in vivo testing and followed by uh, animal testing so identifying a bias is very very important how the drugs will be tested so in vitro becomes very very simple because you know here we can see if the drug is enzyme inhibitor just incubate with the enzyme and find out whether uh, the reaction is possible so enzyme inhibitions or receptor agonist antagonists so we can have the cell lines which are very particular to that receptor we can incubate with our drug which can be radio ligand and we can find out whether the uh, agonism or antagonism is there you know so these type of things are there antibacterial cells for example antibacterial drugs so simple you know the zone of inhibition can be used so more the simpler test more is you know we can screen more number of drugs similarly 
when we do in vitro testing then we have to go for in vivo testing also so in vivo testing on the animal often involves the we have to develop the clinical condition in the animals so that is very very important for example if i want to test antihypertensive so uh, and it, if it is a new drug then antihypertensive will be tested in a uh, hypertensive animal that means first i have to uh, uh, develop the hypertension in the animal in the rat and then i can test my drug so in vivo testing also required like you know the proper development of the animal model so that is very very crucial similarly there are many other examples we will not go into that but other than this we also have genetic type of animal models for example there are certain genes which can be knocked out so that the animal become a proper model for that particular disease so uh, so uh, these type of transgenic animals are nowadays available and we can use them for studying our drugs for example you know we have uh, spontaneously hypertensive rats shr which is more clinically relevant model as compared to uh, normal animal models you know spontaneously hypertensive, uh, hypertensive rat then we have dbdb type of uh, mouse uh, so likewise we have these type of different transgenic animals and which can be obtained and can be studied but there are still the disadvantages in in vivo testing so this is one example i'll just mention here that you know thalidomide disaster which happened somewhere in between uh, somewhere in between 1950 to 1960 uh, so this thalidomide disaster thalidomide was given as a um, it was given as a morning sickness drug to the pregnant ladies and uh, uh, so uh, For, uh, for treatment of morning sickness that is vomiting uh, you know or the nausea feeling to the in the pregnant woman so uh, this drug was given and later on it was found that the the, the new nets which were born were not having the limbs and this is called as phocomedia that means the drug was trans uh, tetragenic you know uh, teratogenic sorry the drug was teratogenic uh so um, that means uh, even uh, it doesn't mean that uh, that uh, the drug was not studied in animal but the drug was studied in animal but in it was studied in mouse or the mice and in mice it is not teratogenic whereas in rabbit and human it is found to be teratogenic so now we have the strong guidelines where we have to do toxicity guidelines uh, using more than you know uh, one form of animal so this is how we keep on improving our uh, essays also and testings so next is test validity so for uh, test validity is very very important whatever testing procedure which you are doing for the drug uh, it should have some validity that means uh, 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 for example uh, uh, if i want to develop a disease in the animals uh, in preclinical animals so it should have a very good face validity that means it should uh, the disease should be very much similar to uh, the symptom which are seen in animal should be very much similar to how it is seen in human being you know so that is very very important uh, so this is the drawback if we talk about antipsychotic drugs because there is no very good psychotic model available in the animals you know the how it is seen in human cannot be exactly um it can be translated into the animal so that is the drawback you know so sometimes we have to do some additional testing and then consider those point as the effects so test validity is very very important then uh, next is finding a lead compound so lead compound uh, which shows the desired pharmacological activity and uh, Uh, sometimes the activity may not be very good but uh, it could be associated with side effects also so but at least it starts you know we can use this lead compound as a starting point for drug development drug designing and drug development and you can keep on improving this lead compound and later on we can have a better compound in this way so this can be like you know i can correlate this example with the discovery of penicillin so penicillin initial discovery whatever has was done right now with the drugs which are uh, which are beta lactam antibiotics are very much different from the initial penicillin so we have came a long way where we have improved the qualities overall qualities of the penicillin as well as we have uh, also reduced the disadvantages which were associated with the uh, very old drug penicillin okay let us go to the steps which are involved in uh, drug discovery so the steps are uh, first is screening of uh, i have taken here like you know you can have different screening uh, you can get the products from different uh, sources so you can get it from the screening of natural products 
and from the animal from the from the marine uh, world from uh, they can be venoms and toxic toxins also then there is also like you know folklore uses so in this is where we uh, india uh, is giving lot many drugs uh, where you know traditionally neem is considered to be one of the significant plant used in our ancient literature and uh, now we are also using neem uh, the uh, the significant number of compounds has been isolated from neem and is being used similarly sincona where the twinin has been isolated and used as anti malarial so there are so many examples where you know the drugs are coming from the folklore use and they have been now used as the principal um, molecule so next other than that is screening of synthetic compound libraries there are uh, some uh, fourth point is existing drug or me too drugs so already the drugs are existing but we are using it for some other purpose so this example of drug repurposing we also have seen during covid uh, 19 you know so the drugs which are used for other purposes are used as antivirals here then starting from a natural ligand or or a modulator uh, such as natural ligand for receptor substrate for, uh, for enzymes enzyme product also can become the source for um, the drug discovery other than that we are going for combinatorial synthesis computer aided drug designing computerized searching of the databases which are available so there are so many drugs which has been uh, there in the databases also we cannot call them as a drug but yes there are the chemical entities which has been there in the databases which can be screened for uh, different diseases and uh, we can get drug out of it then designing the new compounds uh, lead compounds by nmr and one of the factor which is always there is serendipity you know so serendipity is also which is also called as chance discovery is also responsible for a new drug development so first we and we see that screening of natural products so we can you know this is venka rosia and we know that uh, the anti cancer drug like vincristine and blastin has come from this so there are good sources of natural product which we can see uh some examples i have given here is morphine cocaine digitalis quinine tubocurarin nicotine paclitaxel so these are the uh, very useful drugs and morphine is still used morphine derivatives is still used and uh, so these are coming from the natural sources you know so uh, the advantage is uh, uh, disadvantage is isolation sometimes it's a complex procedure and the synthesis uh, so sometimes then uh, if the isolation is difficult and if the species is endangered so sometimes you know the same thing is made in the lab so that also can be done so we can have the uh, we can have the basic structure from this co compound and then we can develop them in the lab that is also possible microbial world already i told you there are so many antibiotics which has been obtained from microbes penicillin cephalosporin tetracycline amino glycoside chloramphenicol so all these has been isolated from microorganism and they are very effective antibiotics then marine world so sponges fish coral marine microorganisms can also be used as a source uh, here i have given example of furacin a which is uh, anti tumor drug uh, anti tumor drug isolated from cyanobacterium which is from the sea then animal sources animal sources like you know the peptides which are isolated from animals and uh, one example is epibetidine which is analgesic which is obtained from the frog skin okay, so so we have animal sources also we have venoms and toxins also so teprotide is obtained from viper and it is uh, used for the development so this has a you know the uh, basic compound for the development of anti hypertensive drug keptoprene so uh, so there are like you know other than that venoms and toxins are also used as an uh, for preparing the anti venom drugs you know then medical folklore already i told you that you know already uh, the in the folklore means we, uh, it is already there in our society in the villages where the treatment is done with the help of these plants and we are using them we are extracting the active mo moiety for example here i have given sincona so sincona jungles are already there in india and quinine is been isolated and quinine is considered to be very potent uh, anti malarial drug and also used for certain uh, development of uh, cardiovascular drugs also so reserpine which is obtained from raulfia uh, then atropine atropa belladonna morphine from opm poppy digitalis fox glow so epica kemitin so these are the examples where we, we have received this information from our ancestors and we have developed the drugs then screening of synthetic compounds so out, out other than this um, we also have industries who are working who are developing the new product they are synthesizing them 
and they screen their library they keep on screening the library and they try to find out the lead compound so mostly our uh, drug development is based upon screening of synthetic compound considering that we, we uh, i'll be talking about uh, drug development phases so existing drug as i told you that you know the drugs are already existing and you can use for different purpose uh, so uh, there are like me too drugs and by modifying the structure and certain activity you can develop them into a different molecule so this compound can be done uh, sometime the actual molecule has side effect so in that case the side effect can be considered as the biological effect and can be developed into that way for example sulfonamide which are antimicrobial antibacterial agents uh, they have the side effect on increasing blood glucose level and uh, this is uh you know uh, increasing sorry reducing the blood glucose level that is hypoglycemia uh, as a side effect so this side effect was developed as the treatment for diabetes so these molecules were used for treatment of the drug uh, tolbutamide okay so sulfonylurea so tolbutamide so sulfonylurea class came as an anti diabetic drug so this is mainly used minoxidil which dilates blood vessels and used as anti hypertensive but uh, because anti dilation of the blood vessels of the skull results in hair growth so because of that the minoxidil is also used for hair growth because to the patient where the minoxidil is given uh, for, as an anti hypertensive drug in those patient hair growth was found to be increased so that's why this drug also came as for hair growth treatment okay then starting from natural ligands or uh, modulators so already in our body there are so many uh, natural ligands are present and they can be considered as the lead molecule for example already in our body adrenaline noradrenaline is present so we have used those structure we have identified these molecules and we know that these molecules are responsible for uh, for uh, smooth muscle relaxation so we have developed them we have identified their structure and we have developed certain molecules such as salbutamol which increases adrenergic activity and can be used as uh, can be used in asthma so uh, from the natural ligand which are there in our body we can identify and we can develop the drugs so these are so many like you know there are uh, unending stories and chloral hydrate then lithium in mood disorder lsd discovery of penicillin and angiolytic drug meprobamate uh, silenafil you know so there are so many uh, stories which are associated with the drug development you know every drug has a story so we can see that these molecules are not only coming from uh, always coming from industry some of them they have uh, synthesized within the academic lab and silenafil is one of them so we can see that you know it is not only restricted to um, uh, industry okay then last is like you know isolation and purification so that is also very very important because only we cannot just take the drug from the uh, from the plant and use it you know so that is a very crude approach of using call, calling it as a drug so uh, isolation purification is must so one example i have given is penicillin when it was initially found or discovered by fleming he was not able to use it because it was in the unpurified form and later on you know because of only that reason he was not able to use it but when the purification and isolation of penicillin got possible uh, because of the freeze drying techniques and chromatography which came up that time then the penicillin was used in human so yes the isolation purification is important structural determination is important techniques like x ray crystallography nma spectroscopy mass and ir are very much important in structural determination of the lead molecule let us understand so these are the all sources which i have spoken about right now from where we can get the drugs you know so it is coming from nature it is coming from lab as a synthetic molecule so let us understand if we have identified a molecule how is the drug development and approval process is so if you have the molecule which has shown good activity in 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 vitro studies that means in the cell lines and all so you can go for preclinical study so in preclinical study we have toxicity studies then we also have the efficacy studies which we have to keep on doing it so long term animal toxicity is very much important then uh, simultaneously one can go for product development um, manufacturing packaging label, label designing so these are the simultaneously activity which can be done okay so but after this preclinical study one can uh, go for clinical trial after applying uh, this molecule as ind that is after filing investigational new drug application okay so after this only the these molecules can be studied in 
clinical trials with the help of phase zero, phase one, phase two, and phase three um, clinical trials of uh, different phases. So this is the overall chart. You can see that you know uh, how the drug development takes place. So we can see that almost six and a half years are required for initial synthesis and characterization isolation of the molecule from the nature or from the lab and then simultaneously you have to keep on doing the animal testings and short term animal uh, so this is you know the animal testing is required so this almost takes six and a half half, uh, half years and then seven years you can see that is required for clinical development where you are doing phase one study phase two phase three so almost seven years and uh, one and a half year is required for in uh, you can say that you know you are applying in between ind you are applying in between nda so there is a lot of legal uh, uh, things also which we are doing so uh, you know so almost 14 to 15 years are required uh, for the drug discovery you know so this is approximately 15 year from initial synthesis to the approval of nda new drug application so that after that the drug molecule can come into the market but then even after coming into the market we have to keep on doing the surveys and we have to keep on watching the adverse reaction which can be seen with these drugs so this is very very important so with this chart you know i can uh, tell students who are right now attending the lecture that you know you can have a big role uh, in uh, drug development if you see that you know the chemical synthesis of the molecules uh, characterization of the molecule is very much needed so we require the scientists who, are, who, who who will be working in this area then clinical development uh, in preclinical and clinical development also so here also a lot of scientists from you know um, uh, health sciences background are required to work in this area because you know the clinical trials are huge they are multicentric they are happening at various places and it is not a sole responsibility of the pi that is physician to carry out this trial it is very difficult so you require to have the people who will be working in clinical trial uh, for research and development other than that the other than that uh, you know we require the people who will be involved with adverse reaction uh, monitoring that is called as pharmacovigilance. So pharmacovigilance is also coming up as a very good field where the students, you know, you know they can get good opportunity to work with uh, drugs. Uh, so let us go next slide. Uh, so let us understand what are different phases of clinical trials. So these are phase zero, which is human microdosing studies, phase one, where we are using first in human and we are using healthy volunteers, phase two, where the patients are used first time, Phase three, where we are using patients and they are the multicentric trials. Phase four is after marketing. Let me again tell you that phase zero, which is human microdosing studies. Phase one, first in human trials where healthy volunteers are used. Phase two, patients. Phase three, multicentric trials. Phase four, that is after marketing. So when the drug is in the market, that is mostly involved with the adverse drug effects. Now uh, let us understand. Now let us go with like you know how the drug uh, drug molecule which has been synthesized or isolated uh, can be studied. So initially we have the preclinical study which is to be done in the animals. So there are efficacy study and there are toxicity studies. Efficacy study as a, we ha already I told you that you have to develop animal model and you have to see whether your drug is working in that animal model. The animal model can be diabetic. The animal model can be hypertensive. The animal model can also be like you know some CNS related disorder. Similarly, uh, toxicity testing also has to be done, which is a short term toxicity that is acute toxicity or it uh, uh, subacute and uh, chronic toxicity. Acute toxicity, you just want to understand whether your drug is toxic to the animal at a certain dose. So the guidelines are given by OECD. And as per the guideline, you can develop your toxicity uh, protocol and you can study your molecule or drug um, by giving it to the animal and observing it for 48 hours. So if the animal is dying, that means the drug is toxic at that dose. And if it is not, that means it is safe. So this is how you can identify the toxic dose of the compound or the molecule. So toxicity studies are very, very important. So uh, this, uh, this study has to be done in animals. So there are, these are some different toxicological studies which I can just uh, tell you. I will not go much in detail of these. So these are acute toxicity as I told you, subacute, chronic, special toxicity also because this molecule after once it will come into the human trial, they will be used on human. So we also have to consider the whether it is affecting the reproductive system. 
this molecule could also be taken by the pregnant lady so we also have to understand whether any teratogenicity is there or not it has to be used chronically we have to understand whether there will be some carcinogenicity or not you know and then mutagenicity some mutation if happens because of the molecule mm -hmm. and local toxicity if you feel that your drug has to be applied on to the skin or into the eye you know so you require to do the local toxicity so these are the the guidelines are already available uh, uh, free uh, freely they are available and we can see these guidelines and we can perform these toxicity as per our uh, requirement as well as these are mandatory some uh, these uh, studies are mandatory when you are applying for clinical studies so i will not go much in detail with subacute or subchronic study chronic toxicity for subacute is like you know you are doing it for uh, uh, for almost uh, um, three or more doses and uh, done for a month and uh, chronic toxicity when 90 to 180 days you are giving the drug and you are seeing the effects and sometime one year or longer also can be done carcinogenicity when you are observing the carcinogenicity potential of the drug reproduction you are giving it to the pregnant female uh, rats and then you are seeing their effects in the uh, uh, on the reproduction as well as you can also give it to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, male rat and female rat just to understand what is happening uh, on their reproductive organs what are the effects then uh, genito genitotoxicity and mutagenicity studies so here we use salmonella typhimurium and we see whether there is certain mutation which are happening uh pharmacokinetic also is very very important these are important study they talk about so here again you know we, i can tell that uh, students may get a good opportunity to work in pharmacokinetics you know because uh, pharmacokinetics means how much the drug is coming into the blood uh, effect we are seeing by dynamic you know whatever the effect the animal is showing so that is dynamic but how much drug is actually coming into the blood so that is kinetics you know pharmacokinetics how much drug is getting absorbed how much it is how it is getting metabolized how it is getting distributed and how it is getting excreted all these parameters are very very crucial for drug development and we should know before the drug comes into the human trial the kinetics should be very much understood and for this we are using rat dogs and monkeys and uh, so these are preferable models dogs and monkeys they are higher animals and they are used ADME is absorption distribution metabolism excretion so this whole parameter for that molecule is very very important we have to get these parameters bioavailability t half so these are important then we also have to like you know with the previous study we are, we also determine therapeutic index that is effective dose 50 and uh, lethal dose 50 that means uh, the 50% of the dose which is safe in the you know, in the uh, these studies you know so that that is important i told you that you know this is almost uh, seven years and or you know so this much of time is required to carry out these studies and out of 10000 molecule only 10 molecule passes you know so so many molecule fail in preclinical and why this these many number of molecules are failing is because uh, they fail in adme you know the drug molecule is very effective it is very uh, you know good working good in uh, in cell lines but when we give it to the animal we see that it is not getting absorbed only so if it is not getting absorbed so there is like you know it is not possible that the drug will be uh, can be given to the human because if it is of higher molecular weight or size so it will not cross the uh, the gi membrane and it will not get into the blood the molecule which are highly metabolized the molecule which are highly toxic to the kidney will be completely removed out you know so they are all the failures so out of 10000 we get only 10 molecules here now we want to go for you know once we have the data which we have received from pre clinical evaluation now we have to we want to go for clinical so while going to clinical early formulation studies are important early formulation studies means the molecule cannot be given in the form of powder how it was given to the animals you know now it has to be converted into some formulation and then only it can be given to the patients who will be the part of the clinical trials so that is very very important and this is the responsibility of pharmaceutics department of pharmaceutical sciences and they are responsible for making it in the form of tablets or capsules or syrups you know depends so if the if the trial has to be done in the kids so preferable will be syrup whereas if it is uh, uh, if it is like adult then uh, capsule or tablet will do 
So these studies, the pre-formulation studies are also necessary. Drug solubility, dissolution rate, physical form, stability, all these factors. If my drug is very good, it is working very nicely in preclinical and in vitro model, but it is not stable at all. You know, so then the problem arises. <clears throat> So these two phases, you know, where we are, I'm talking, this is the FNB department of pharmaceutical industry. And this also is one of the area where uh, students can explore uh, their possibility of uh, working, you know, because here we require a lot of FND scientists then. Okay. Uh, so once we have, you know, come up with the initial product uh, formulation and uh, also we have gone for like, you know, applied for IND and then we can go for uh, first time, uh, we can go for the clinical trial. So uh, we can develop clinical trial and in this trial, whatever the capsule, uh, whatever the uh, powder, which was initially tested in animals now has to be converted into capsules so that it can be given uh, to the patient. But here again, we are doing one thing, one precaution we have to take that we are right now giving only the active moiety. We are not giving excipients because this is not the time where we will convert it uh, use it with excipient because uh, right now we want to understand whatever the effect we are getting is of the drug and not of the excipients so that's why this is very very crucial human ethics committee permission is required to be taken and this is the committee uh, which is uh, comprising of these all members first we have to take the consent from the patient if they want to be part of the clinical trial now it is verbal as well as written and as well as video you know uh, videographed so this is important then placebo is playing an important role because whenever we are giving drug to the patient uh, in our trial we are also giving uh, one uh, one uh, part of the patient we are giving placebo the placebo means you know it is not it is looking like a drug but it is not having the active moiety so the if i'm giving the drug in the red color capsule so placebo will also look like a red color capsule but it will have some starch powder or some calcium powder you know it will not have the active moiety so placebo is to remove the bias in the patient's mind that um, you know sometimes patient feel that after taking the drug he feels good so that that type of bias is normally present and that to remove that type of bias uh, we have to give placebo so first trial is uh, in human is microdosing studies, uh, human microdosing studies. So here we just want to understand the pharmacokinetic of the molecule. So how the molecule is behaving, how much is getting absorbed, how much is its half life, you know, so that and first time we are giving it to human. So the dose used is subtherapeutic. So we are not giving a giving a therapeutic dose also because we do not know anything for the first time we are giving it to human. We do not know anything about its side effects, which might be present uh, in, in the molecule, which has not been noticed in the preclinical. So that is why we are not doing any type of, uh, um, we are not giving a therapeutic dose, but we are giving a subtherapeutic dose. Volunteers are healthy volunteers. So here our subjects are healthy volunteers. So we are giving it to them. So 10 is the minimum number which we require. Then is first in human trial, that is phase one trial. So once we have received the kinetic safety of the drug, then we can give, go for phase one trial. So phase one trial is the objective is to check whether animal and human show any differences. Pharmacokinetic variability is there between the usual, whether what is the tolerated dose range. So in this is the first time we are giving at the therapeutic dose and we are understanding uh, the some dose related concept of the molecule here and also the side effects you know so indication of the side effect can be seen here because we are giving at the therapeutic level and at that level if the side effects are associated that also we have to observe so let us understand these points small points phase one so here we are using healthy volunteers we also have clinical researcher team which is working uh, together then there is an informed concern which has to be taken from the patient uh, not from the patient sorry healthy volunteer then uh, the medical backup should be provided because it is for the first time we are using in the in these people and that's why the medical backup should be there. Continuous monitoring is required. There is single and repeat doses. You can increase the dose level. So we are trying to understand what is how, how much the dose can be tolerated. So these type of points can be understood by phase one trial. And uh, uh, this is also we can consider this as a safety trial. So this trial is done in more, uh, fewer than 100 healthy people. 
and uh, we identify the drug is safe and uh, if any side effect is there that also we can identify we understand the pharmacokinetic hopefully now you are understanding what is kinetic kinetic is uh, how the drug is behaving in the body ad me absorption distribution metabolism excretion and uh, this study is also providing how much drug can be tolerated by the human so mtd maximum tolerable dose okay so phase 1 trials are something sometimes conducted in severely ill patients or in less ill patient when pharmacokinetic issues are addressed mm -hmm. so sometimes it may be required that you know we may take patient directly rather than taking healthy volunteers mm -hmm. now next is phase 2 trials phase 2 trials where uh, several hundred patients are taken now we are increasing the number here so more number of patients are taken now this is patients Uh, previously, it was volunteers, healthy volunteers. Now, this is in the patients because we have identified what is the maximum dose which can be tolerated by human, and that's why we can we will use the dose here, which will be always lesser than that dose. So, patients can be taken, and we have also identified the side effect which are associated with. Just a minute. Picture side. Right. so uh, so several hundred patients can be taken here and we can identify uh, the dose now and uh, we will also identify that you know how and why drug works in the body and what are the side effect it causes uh, whether the drug is effective and safe now very important here is we are identifying the uh, efficacy of the drug in human for the first time in phase 2 trial because we have taken patients here so if the drug is effective we will find that the drug is working you know we can correlate this phase 2 trial which recently happened for serum vaccine you know covishield which was carried out in maharashtra so so many centers were there in maharashtra where this vaccine was given so uh, you know so we identify whether there is efficacy of the uh, vaccine or not Uh, so this is uh, this we can identify so these are well controlled trials and uh, we are uh, safety concern in disease patient and uh, can be identified and uh, you know so these all important points will be able to see just like you know if i put it on few lines then we are taking almost 150 to 350 ill people we are taking consent from them we know what is the end point uh, end point is decided that means for how much time we have to give it to the patient then maximum monitoring because they are patients we have to do maximum monitoring and uh, uh, so uh, uh, this also trial is convert, divided into two form one is early phase and late phase phase to trial so early phase is patients and single blind now this is the new term which is coming here in this single blind and double blind single blind means a uh, single blind means patient doesn't know what they have been given but physician know what the patient has been given this single blinding is done so as to avoid biasing by the patient if patient know that you know for fever i have i am given paracetamol so even if the fever does not go down he will he will say no no i am feeling good you know so this type of uh, biasing can happen and that's why the trials are always blinded so either they are single blinded or double blinded single is when only physician who is prescribing the medicine uh, is knowing the treatment but patients are not knowing and in late phase of phase 2 trial this is completely double blind even the patient is not know, knowing he, what he is taking and physician is also not knowing what he is taking so this type of you know blinding can be done in the trials out of this trial we what we have understood we have understood the use of drug uh, in in the type of the patient in what severity of the uh, disease we can give this uh, drug what is the dose we can give into to the drug what is the pharmacokinetic of the molecule in these ill patients how the drug is behaving this we get then nature of the side effects in the patients we can get and effects in some special groups can be obtained so after you know so this is this gives a lot of data and we are very much confirmed that our drug is efficacious mm -hmm. our drug is safe mm -hmm. so in that case we can go for phase 3 trial mm -hmm. so in phase 3 trial you know uh, uh, phase 3 trial we can see that you know here we are taking large group of patients almost 2000 to 3000 number of patients are taken and it is at different places this trial is run so it is called as multi centric trial and again we can compare the drugs with the existing drug because you know 
if the new drug is coming so it is not always a new drug there is always a existing drug in the market so whether the new drug is better than the existing drug or it is not that much good so these all type of trials can be done in phase 3 then a yeah, lot of statistics is generated adverse reaction we are try to understand because it is happening for example in india so it is happening at uh, south india it is happening at north india it is happening at uh, you know uh, uh, maharashtra that is middle of india so we are getting generating lot of data in different type of population you know so the population who are from north india the population and simultaneously that this trial is run across the globe then we get the data from china we get data from us you know so lot of data has been generated for this type of trials so phase 3 trials again it is divided into phase 3 and phase 3 b type of trial and uh, some you know you can initiate the regulatory procedure during this trial if you are finding that you know the drug is very much safe and very much efficacious so in large number of patients so you can keep on starting for you can um, start making the document that is nda or the dosier okay so this is for the regulatory permission because you want to you have seen that phase 1 trial has given you a very good results phase 2 given the very good results phase 3 in a huge number of population is showing to be very much safe and efficacious then you can apply for new drug application simultaneously phase 3b will keep on going even after regulatory submission because regulatory submission also take 2 to 1 uh, to 2 years so simultaneously uh, phase 3b part can keep on happening and uh, then uh, you know so if, uh, if i again you know summarize these uh, trial phase 3 trial so as i told you that more number of patient in thousands of patient it is multi centric happening at different places randomized randomize means uh, some uh, the uh, the population the patients are taken randomly that means in uh, in some there are female there are male also different age group so completely randomized type of trial it is double blind double blind physicians are not knowing what the patient has been given patients are not knowing what they have taken you know so this type of blinding no one at the uh, if it is happening at the uh, hospital so no one knows that what has been mentioned okay so uh, more certain data for the objective of phase 2 studies uh, we uh, get out of these and so finally whatever we uh, we were thinking that you know the drug will be acting by this manner or you know it will be so that everything uh, the picture get clear in this trial also drug interactions you know because we are carrying this activity at different huge number of population at different places so it is possible that the person we, to whom we are giving this our anti hypertensive treatment might all be taking uh, might be taking anti diabetic uh, medicine also so if there is a drug interaction we come to know from this type of trial sub group start to be established you know so we understand that you know this uh, the sub group means the females are more getting benefited or males are more get, getting benefited or there is no difference between these groups you know so these type of answers we can get from this exhaustive trial special features and problems special features and problems also show up so any patient who suffered from a heart attack during covid vaccine also this type of problem had come because when it is given to the huge population one of them may suffer from heart attack or some other problem and then it is you know it is the the problem is told to the regulatory agencies and they see to it that you know it is not because of the drug but it may be due to some sudden other problem okay so this is how you know the phase 3 trial is done once these trials are over then only you know we i told you that new drug application can be done and complete monograph inserts can be made that mean they can develop the product they can write what the product is the complete monograph can be written uh, the inserts can be given into the uh, into the product and uh, which will include every every profile and um, complete profile of the drug that how it has to be taken um how the drug has to be taken uh, when the drug has to be taken or um, uh, the other uh, uh, things like adverse effects and if adverse effects are seen then they have to report it to the physician so all these instructions are given uh, in the insert so when the new drug application is been submitted so it is under fda review and uh, if uh, they find it very uh, very much you know Uh, trustable and they feel that you know the molecule is very much efficacious then they can go for plant inspection and they can give the approval to the drug so once the drug is been approved then uh, it has to be marketed 
so for marketing like you know there is licensing phase and it can be a uh, post licensing phase licensing phase and uh, phase 4 can uh, you can see that you know you can keep on uh, it in the, the fixed duration is not there as we have seen in phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 so here the drug molecule the drug is always there in the market it is used by the patient and initially only the manufacturer he has to submit the adverse effect every 6 months if someone reports it so he has to talk about his molecule for 6 months for 2 years and then for next uh, annually for next 2 years so he has to just keep on telling about if the molecule is working good in the population so if any side effects are there then it will be reported and it is possible that the drug may go out of the market also there are so many drugs which has gone out of the market one example i can tell you is nimesulide which was very much used uh, last 10 years back but now it is not used because of liver toxicity so simultaneously there are many other drugs which has come and which has been used by the population and then they have gone out of phase four that is market from the market so phase four uh, talks about the post approval trials it is post approval trial it is used by the population uh, so many people are using it different age groups are using it different types of patients are using it so every aspect of the drug efficacy or adverse effects you know whatever is related comes out during phase four studies you know so they can be quantified and then we have to keep on improving and telling so this is the whole process which are right now i have told you starting with the lab which you can see here starting with the lab in the preclinical model that is rat or mouse then in the first time in the human wing uh, followed by the patient and then uh, getting into the market and followed by in, uh, into the uh, how it comes into the uh, market you know after FDA approval so this is how is the journey of uh, drug uh, as I told you that, you know, there are many drugs which has been withdrawn from the market after phase four. And these are some of the examples uh, which you can see, for example, Sibutramine. Sibutramine was used as anorexia. That means it is used for weight loss treatment. And in 2010, it was withdrawn because of cardiovascular risk. Then there is Rofecoxib. 2004, it was withdrawn because of myocardial infarction. You know, so likewise, uh, there are these many drugs, they come, they cross 10 years of span uh, to come into the market and then they go out of the market also very quickly. You know, Rosiglitazone again because of the heart attack, it is not no more use, it is oral hypoglycemic. Recently approved drug, if I tell you that, you know, what are recently approved drugs? So example, we have seen uh, so many in front of us for COVID and they are uh, Covaxin and there is Covishield and also we have uh, heard about uh, Moderna vaccine, Pfizer vaccine. So Spikevax is Moderna vaccine, which has been given recently the approval and it comes under biological. And uh, other than that, you know, there are so many biological only which are getting approvals. And uh, for example, Erinumab, which is MGen, and uh, for migraine treatment, for hypercholesteremia, Liquio injection, which is again SIRNA, uh, which is developed by Novartis and Sun Pharmaceutical also. This is a monoclonal antibody for psoriasis. So uh, there are so many drugs which keeps on getting the approvals and they also go on getting out of the market also. So this is one like, you know, uh, these are rats which feel happy that, you know, they feel that we are in the control group. So no treatment will be done on us. So they feel very much happy when they see the other rats which are under the trial. Okay, so that covers my presentation. Hopefully, uh, I gave the justification to the lecture. That was a wonderful presentation, madam. Uh, okay, so if any questions are there, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Students, uh, PG students and visa students, and even the faculty, if you have any questions, you can please ask your questions. MSc microbiology students. In the meanwhile, till the, till the students are thinking about asking some question, uh, I have a, a couple of questions, madam. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, we can uh, one is, uh, I have been hearing about this, uh, this word drug. 
and a medicine or a chemotherapeutic agent so is there any difference between these terms drug and a medicine okay yes uh, normally you know we call we use these terms very uh, unrestrictedly like you know drug for example drug if it, it is very common in india hmm. we use the term drug Okay. but if the same word is used outside india they will consider this as a abuse substance or a substance of abuse okay you know so yes we have to be very careful when we are using the terms but medicine is a better term which we you we can use uh, or we can go for but mm. in uh, our like in india we are using very commonly uh, the drug you know mm. chemotherapeutic substances uh, basically you know they will be used for uh, chemotherapy that means the molecule which will be used for some type of uh, uh, diseases which are caused by uh, viruses or bacteria or fungi you know so this the malaria or you know so that that will be uh, the proper word chemotherapeutic agents so is it for microbial infection or some uh, mostly infection okay yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, some type of infections okay is, is monoclonal antibody a drug monoclonal antibody can be considered as biological drug okay because we have so many right now coming up as uh, you know which has been approved as a drug mm -hmm. so but they are, they come under biological so we have uh, for giving the approvals uh, we have separate bodies under the same uh, uh, authority uh, which looks after biologicals okay then uh, one more question which i wanted to ask is about the cpc sca uh, now Uh, is cpc sca and the uh, uh, institutional animal ethics committee are they one and the same or uh, again there is a difference uh, yeah uh, so cpc sca is a central body and mm -hmm. which is uh, the office is located at delhi and iac is institutional body which is located at all the institution where, where the animal experiments are uh, done so mm -hmm. iac works under cpc sca okay okay so for every kind of a uh, experiment which uh, we would like to carry out on say animals like rats or maybe rabbits so every time do we have to take the permission from the cpc sca uh, we have to take permission from iac okay. and iac sends the list uh, for all the protocol which has been approved and they are okay. sent to cpc sca cpc sca is not giving the approval uh, the approval is given by iac for small okay. animals okay okay Uh, then uh, one more thing was: uh, Is it required to take the grass certificate for uh, the drugs? Uh, grass is basically for you know there are certain countries which give this grass certificate. Grass certificate is used for some of the safer molecules which are obtained from uh, uh, you know from uh, the uh, uh, you know they can be dietary supplement or they are obtained from the natural things you know and they consider to be very much safe. Okay. So that is what is considered as you know. so the they will come under grass but they will not be considered as uh, medicine by usfda so okay. grass is a concept of you know usfda okay then one more uh, difference which i wanted to know is uh, between pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics are are these okay. two terms the same or they have a different meaning no they are very much different okay pharmacodynamic is uh, if in a very small you know very layman language if i say a uh, pharmacodynamic is what a drug do to your body is pharmacodynamic and what body do to the drug is pharmacokinetic okay what drug do to your body that means your drug is exciting cns okay so they are cns stimulants mm -hmm. or if it is re re uh, relieving fever you know so it is cooling body so what drug do to the body is pharmacodynamic and what Drug, uh, body does to the drug that means it is metabolizing it is okay. excreting it is removing it out of the body so that is pharmacokinetics kinetics okay yes students uh, do you have any questions uh good afternoon sir i have one question yes yes sure uh good afternoon madam suppose afternoon. Uh, there is some uh, drug of plant origin and it is well known mm, well known it is taken Uh, by our uh, it is used in ayurvedic formulations so if we synthesize the same drug by some different method like nowadays some method so is it necessary to pass that drug through all through all these trials That's if it is question. ayurvedic uh, see uh, when we use the term ayurveda 
so ayurveda means uh, how it is mentioned in ayurvedic literature you know so okay. the same way if you prepare your drug then it will be called as ayurvedic if it is not then it will be called as herbal drug so it is coming only as a herbal origin okay. in case if you isolate a molecule out of herb or out of uh, uh, this uh, nature then you can patent it and you can develop it as drug also simultaneously as i told you that you know there are many drugs which has come from the herbal origin but because of some constraints uh, maybe uh, it is costly procedure to isolate so in that case it is possible to synthesize within the lab by uh, uh, seeing its structure so in any way like either you are isolating from the uh, herb uh, you can patent it and you can develop it as a drug or you can synthesizing in the lab and patenting it or you can uh, also consider this as a drug so but, you can do it. okay but madam but if it is safely used for for years then is it necessary to pass that drug through all the phases like phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 of the trials okay so if the molecule is studied in the past lot of literature is available for that molecule as such yeah. then there is i mean the phase or the trials are not required but if you want to make it is a as a prescription drug you know you want that the physician should prescribe my molecule then you have to go then it will be considered as you know the uh, drug and then you have to go through uh, all uh, the whole process of uh, drug discovery okay even Thank if it is known even if it is for example recently uh, when we were working with fenugreek so fenugreek is methi most mm. commonly used you know uh, i told that indus biotech name where, to with whom we were i was working for a long time also so a fenugreek they developed so many they isolated many molecules out of fenugreek and some had anti diabetic potential some had uh, you know anabolic type of activity so they carried out uh, clinical trials if they uh, for some of the molecule where they wanted that it should be prescribed as drug if you do not want to then you can go as a nutraceutical also there are certain herbs from where you can isolate and you can just put it as nutraceutical nutraceutical market is different it is not very much regulated at least in india and you can keep it on website also and people are there to buy okay thank you madam thank you madam is there anybody who wants to ask questions okay madam uh, uh, that was a really very informative lecture okay very in depth lecture and uh, indeed it was supported with very beautiful slides and a good presentation and uh, some of the things were especially very interesting for example uh, the uh, using the side effect of a drug for the benefit of the patients uh, that i think i found very interesting okay uh, so before we end uh, this webinar meeting i would like to express uh, my deep sense of gratitude to dr urmila aswar madam for very spontaneously accepting our invitation to deliver this expert lecture uh, one important thing about this webinar is that it has actually come from a recent association of our institute with pune college of pharmacy uh, this association is in the form of an academic and research mou uh, between the two institutions okay so i thank madam uh, for this association Uh, which i think will benefit the students for their research uh, uh, in the years to come our director professor satputhe sir motivated us to organize uh, this event for the students so i thank him personally and on behalf of the institute for his encouragement and support i also thank professor uh, ullas patil uh, the head of our department microbiology department and who is also the coordinator of iqac Uh, because he is very instrumental in developing a lot of creative ideas that keep the students engaged in different uh, kinds of curricular and extracurricular activities due to his active support we could organize this particular event i thank all the faculty members of this institute for their help in every possible way to arrange this uh, such kinds of uh, student centric uh, activities and programs my special thanks are also to dr charan kaite sir uh, from the forensic uh, institute the government institute of forensic science aurangabad for his whole hearted technical help in arranging this webinar on the virtual platform and also for the live youtube streaming 
last but not the least i thank all of you dear participants for actively participating in this webinar and also motivating us to arrange such academic programs so thank you all once again and uh, just uh, one thing before i leave uh, i request all of you to ensure that you have all registered using the google form because in the future we might want to communicate with you okay so please register and uh, you can yeah, uh, we may even maybe in the future we can distribute the attendance certificate so although this is not being planned right now but we may consider uh, providing you the certificates so thank you very much all of you thank you sir